Hi, welcome to everyone in my tribe. June is Alzheimer's Prevention and Brain Awareness Month. And I want to talk a little bit about mental acuity and Alzheimer's disease. 55 million people worldwide have Alzheimer's disease. And also the, rage, the raising of just general cognitive decline is really going through the roof. Dale Bredesen is one of the major researchers I really rely on. He wrote the book, The End of Alzheimer's. He has a clinically proven program to help stabilize mental acuity and very often totally reverse and cure Alzheimer's. Part of this program is things like a very high alkaline diet, a whole foods diet. Another important thing is blood sugar control. Many call Alzheimer's diabetes of the brain. We must control blood sugar. All of these suggestions are especially important if you carry the genetic variation APOE4, which is a genetic SNP or mutation that 25% of the population carries, but it can, can increase your risk for Alzheimer's disease substantially. I, in my case, I did the 23andMe test and I have this APOE4 genetic variation. So I'm really interested in studying everything I can do to enhance my cognitive ability, to keep my cognitive ability. And there was a really interesting Chinese study looking at nutrients that are especially helpful for people at high risk for Alzheimer's. For example, they have the APOE4 gene. This, this current protocol is what I'm doing, what's suggested in this article, and I'm also going to show you, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm personally doing to keep mentally aware for a long, long time. One is, of course, the alkaline diet. This alkaline diet, high in fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, really helps for mental acuity. Exercise is really important. Strength training, aerobic, daily exercise. Stress reduction with meditation, exercises, visualization. All that's really important. And in this article, in this Chinese article, they talk about neurotrophic factors that actually enhance brain health. And they're largely antioxidants and anti-inflammatory. Things like omega-3 fats. I personally use 3,000 milligrams of EPA, DHA, and I use additional DHA. Dr. Bill Harris, the leading researcher on omega-3 fats, has pointed out that those with a higher omega-3 fat blood level, and remember you can test it on our own little kit, have 49% less risk of developing Alzheimer's. So I keep my omega-3s up, I test my omega-3s. Further, because I have APOE4, I follow the Chinese guidelines and I take extra DHA, maybe even 2,000 milligrams a day. DHA is the omega-3 that particularly goes to the brain. I use quercetin, the quercetin pomegranate mix. This Chinese also suggests quercetin. I use resveratrol, 500 milligrams, very excellent as an antioxidant. I use vitamin D and I make sure my vitamin D is in the 40 to 60 to 70 range, very protective. The Chinese also mentioned that vitamin K is MK7 is brain protective, at least 180 micrograms. And the B vitamins, of course, B12 and B6 and folate. These help to prevent high homocysteine, very protective of the brain. You can get them in a good multivitamin and mineral like we provide or in a, a separate B complex. But I like them all in the multivitamin and mineral. Prevents brain atrophy. Vitamin C, of course, is associated higher plasma concentration. Have several studies associated with better cognitive functioning. So there is a question these days of precision nutrition. Not necessarily the same for everybody. APOE4 carriers need to be specially careful of their diet and provide themselves with a high level of antioxidant, anti-inflammatory agents to prevent inflammation within the brain. There's several articles on this you can look up, but the basic ideas are things like the omega-3 fats, two grams a day is a, is a minimum, test your level, you want to have a nine or 10, quercetin, one to two grams, the vitamin C is extremely important, all the B vitamins, all these different nutrients that I've suggested. So there is a great deal we can do to keep mentally acute. If we have a serious problem, we know that Dr. Bredstein has a wonderful, not only book, but a program, and much of that program can be done online. There's several toxicities that relate to 
cognitive dysfunction like heavy metals toxicity, mold toxicity, viruses that have, have hidden themselves within the body. So if you have a serious problem, go to Bredstein. He's really the most amazing researcher dedicating his entire life to showing that Alzheimer's can be prevented. In fact, he says the next generation does not need to suffer Alzheimer's. And if you carry ApoE4, here's an interesting thing. If you have that genetic SNP, you say, why the heck, why did I have to get it? 25% of the population has this ApoE4 genetic SNP, which makes them more vulnerable, a little greater likelihood of developing Alzheimer's. But that SNP was very important in evolution and is still as important today. It seems having, high, having ApoE4 makes you more resistant to infections to parasites, to bacteria. And so through evolution, the people that had that genetic variation were able to survive, you know, God knows, eating whatever kind of a leftover, a whatever, whatever they ate. There could be a lot, of, and a lot of infections around. We, with ApoE4, are a little more resistant to infection. And that's a good thing, but a little more tendency to, to cognitive decline. So that's my program. I hope you enjoy it. I hope all of you realize that we take care of, you know, I talk about taking care of the bone, but it's taking care of the whole body. The whole body works as one single unit. You remember my favorite mandala. Everything works together. You, we want good brain function. We want good immune function. We want good bone function. And we can approach this any place. People that work with me for bone build their overall health. If you work with Dale Brennstein for cognitive function, you're going to build overall health. We like to do things, our changes should be good for the entire body and essentially be life supporting. I wish you all, all well, have some fun with this. Let's indeed make Alzheimer's a disease that does not occur in the next generation.